Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to our Calvary YouTube channel. We're a local church here based in Miami, Florida, with the mission of bringing people to life through the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you want to find out more about us or have any questions, head over to our website at calvaryconnect.com. God bless you and enjoy today's message. I want to talk to you really quick out of Matthew chapter 11. These are Jesus's words, right? This is what Jesus has been talking about. And, and here we see a statement, a phrase that Jesus says. Matthew chapter 11, picking it up in verse 28. Jesus says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your, for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love what Jesus says in Matthew chapter. Look at the way he puts it in the message paraphrase. Eugene Peterson puts it this way. He says, are you, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me. You'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Come on, anybody want to live freely and lightly in 2018? I want to share a message with you, quick message today. I, I want you to write this down. I want to talk to you from the subject, I've got it from here. I've got it from here. Let's close our eyes, bow our head. Let's ask God to bless this time. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together in your house. God, we thank you for this community. We thank you for this family, for this church. Thank you for the 9 a.m., 11 a.m., the 1 p.m. Thank you for our city campus tonight at 7 p.m. God, thank you for every person that is making a decision to be in step with your motion as they're getting baptized today, God, to say, you know what? I'm leaving the old me behind. Uh, this is uh, s something symbolic that I've decided to follow Jesus. It's an outside declaration of an inside transformation. Thank you for all those people going down into the pools today to make that decision, God. God, we thank you for motion that comes out Friday. God, we, we pray that you would bless that song, that you would help, God, that it would inspire people, lift up their heads for them to see you in a brand new way. Thank you for this time today. We love you, Jesus. Have your way in this place. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. come on, 11 a.m. All God's people say, Amen. can you give Jesus a big shout of praise, 11 a.m.? Anybody in here ever tried to move furniture before? Have you tried to move furniture? Anybody enjoy moving furniture? I thought there's always one, one person. There you go. We pray for me after her service. And uh, this past week, Diana looked around our living room and she said, babe, this couch that we have here, uh, we've had it for such a long time. It is old already. It's, 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 it's like just, it was embarrassingly like bad. It was just like, she's like, let's get rid of it. Let's buy a new sofa. And I said, absolutely, babe, I got it. Whatever you want to do, I, I got this. I help you clean this house, move this house. I'm your man, girl. And uh, so it was time to move furniture. I'm not a fan of moving furniture, but because I love my wife, I, I said, I'm going <laughs> to move this. Uh, the, the sofa was a little bit heavy. I needed some help. I didn't want Diana to help me because, you know, women are uh, delicate flowers. And um, <laughs> she's a champion, but as men, we have to protect. Can I get an amen? amen. Another chance right there to get brownie points. And I uh, <laughs> said, babe, I don't want you to overwork your muscles. I don't want you to get, no, don't worry about it. Um, some friends came over. Hedda and I, he came over. And I said, hey, Hedda, uh, can you help me move this sofa, right? So me and Hedda said, Pfft. We got this. Hannah's like, bro, let's do this right now. We had just finished eating too, which was a bad idea. And we grabbed the sofa and we, we start to move it. As we pick it up, we realize this sofa is a little bit heavier than we thought. And um, my, my back already was like, Alex, put it right back down. This is not for you. <laughs> Call somebody else. But, but we decided to do this. And, and we start moving the sofa and, and we're all over the place. Like, like it, it was bad. On top of that, our wives are laughing at us. Yeah. Diana and Navi are literally laughing at, like literally laughing at us. They're not encouraging us. They're not supporting us. They're not praying for us. They are laughing at us, okay? That's why we need that relationship series next month. Like, 
That was not cool. I'm there like, like sweating, stressing, and all I hear is laughter in the background. And as we're going out the door, like elbows are hitting all the walls, fingers are getting smashed. Uh, like it was just terrible. I'm like, when did we buy this sofa? Let's live with no furniture, babe. That's, that's a new thing. Minimalistic, right? And uh, we're, we're taking this thing. As we go out, Hedda decides to run with the sofa. So come on, come on. That way we can get it done faster. And he's like running, 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 right? As we try to run, we, we are just like out of balance all over the place. I'm like, Jesus, what is going on? I hate sofas. I don't want to sit in a sofa never again in my life. This was bad. And finally we got to the place where we dropped it off. I'm like, why is this so difficult? And I, I learned this this past week. That is very difficult to have forward progress and forward motion in our life when we have heavy things on us. Some of us today, maybe you came in here and there's something heavy on your life. How many know that life can get heavy, right? All of a sudden, life can get difficult. Life can get heavy, right? At times, it's like, man, what, what is it in life that all of a sudden, it's just like there's this heaviness on my life. Sometimes it's because of the, some of the stuff that we even pick up ourselves. Like, I'm going to pick up this. I'm going to pick up that. We got anxiety. We got stress. Some stuff is just that we're controlling, and we want to control everything. Can I get an amen? We want to control everything in my life. Let me control my husband. Let me control my wife. Let me control my kids. Let me control everything. We put so much control. At the end of the day, we can't control anything, but we try to put so much on us. Sometimes it's just what life gives us. Like sometimes life just gives us heavy things, right? All of a sudden we end up in a, in a marriage problem that we're just like, how, how did I end up here? All of a sudden uh, there's a sickness. There's, a, there's all of a sudden a family emergency and, and life can get, can get heavy. At times, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm more there than I like to admit. Where I'm just like out of step with God's motion. To be honest, I'm in my own motion sometimes, right? Like, I'm just carrying this weight. At times, I have more anxiety on me than I like to admit, right? I'm anxious. I, get, I stress out. I'm worried. And, and God, why is all? And I find out it's because I'm carrying more than I'm supposed to be carrying. I got more on my mind, on my heart, on my soul than I should be, right? And the truth is, probably most of us, we're not there yet either. Have you ever felt tired? Have you ever for, felt worn out? Like, man, this is, this is heavy. Life can get heavy. Life can get difficult, right? Maybe you're in here today and you're like, Alex, that's where I am. 2018, I wanted to start off like amazing. 2018, I thought this was it. I'm going to grab my little motion journal. Mm, I'm going to knock this year out. I'm gonna, this is going to be my year. I'm wait till you see me. I'm going to lose 30 pounds in one month. I'm going to have the best marriage in the world. I'm single, but I'm going to get married. I'm just going to do this thing like... I mean, after two, three weeks, it's like, man, this is hard. <laughs> life is difficult. I know there was a Krispy Kreme in every corner, right? Like, <laughs> life is hard. Like, all of a sudden, our bad tempers and our bad attitudes come back. Sinful nature comes back up. There's all these issues on the inside that we didn't even know were there. And after two, three weeks, it's like, God, I messed up again. Like, and, and all of a sudden, we're just like, God, you, you can't forgive me this time. God, this is too difficult. God, you can't carry this. I'm, I'm going to carry this. And we're carrying anxiety, and we're carrying stress, and we're trying to move forward, but there's no way that we can do it. Sometimes when we're carrying something that we shouldn't be carrying, we're going to feel pressure that we shouldn't be feeling. It's hard to move forward, and it's hard to have forward progress when you're trying to balance out excess. I'm just trying to balance all this out and somehow, some way, move forward in my life. Life. God wants us to have forward motion in life. In Matthew chapter 11, we see, we see Jesus, right? What we just read, we see Jesus where he says this phrase, come to me, all you who are weary, all you who are tired, are you burned out, come to me. But, but to put the text into context, I want to tell you a little bit about what's happening in the story in Matthew chapter 11, right? We picked it up in verse 28, but, but to understand why Jesus said this, we have to go to the beginning of Matthew chapter 11. In the beginning of Matthew chapter 11, there's John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist is Jesus' cousin, right? It's his cousin, el primo, right? This is John the Baptist. What happened with John the Baptist is that John the Baptist ended up in prison for talking about Jesus. He was bold. He, he, he didn't care. He didn't have no shame. And he ends up in prison. Now, now you're, if you're John the Baptist, right, let's, let's say you're, the John, you're John the Baptist, you're the John, John the Baptizer, and let's say you're in prison, what do you think about Jesus? Ha, my cousin's about to come save me. 
Hey, I can imagine John the Baptist in prison like, hey, <laughs> hey, God bless you guys, all you jailers and the warden and everybody else. Don't worry, Jesus, he's about to kick down that door and come in here. He's going to free me with no keys because he's Jesus, right? All of a sudden, it's like, Jesus, that's my cousin, my cousin, my primo, he's coming, I'm going to be all right. And John the Baptist is in prison, but he knows that. All of a sudden, Jesus is going, he knows Jesus is the son of God. He knows Jesus is the Messiah. He knows Jesus is the one. So he, he ain't got a worry in the world, right? Like he's just like in prison, like, ah, 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 it's going to be all right. Jesus is coming. I don't even know if he did that, but I think he did. Ah, Jesus is coming. All of a sudden, a, a day goes by, two days go by, maybe 5, 10, 15, 30 days go by, and and he's getting really close to the point of execution. They're, they're about to take off his head. And Jesus is nowhere to be found. John the Baptist, he has some friends come visit him in jail. They're his disciples, people that followed him. And John the Baptist says, hey, I want you to go to Jesus, and I want you to ask him, is he the one, or should I look for another? Whoa. Wow. This is, this is his cousin. This is the same guy that not long ago when he saw Jesus says, behold, the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world is here. And another day he's now saying, are you the one or should I look for another? Right? One day he's confessing, another day he's doubting. One day he's believing, another day he's questioning. And John the Baptist's disciples, I could imagine them too leaving the prison like, yeah, John is right. How come, how, come, how come Jesus hasn't come and freed his cousin? That's, that's some messed up stuff. Like, what? John the Baptist, like, he took your pizza rolls when you were little? Like, why, why, why are you leaving him in prison? This is messed up, right? They go to Jesus. Jesus, your cousin sent us with a message. He says, are you the one or should we look for another? There's now doubt. There's now fear. There's now anxiety. Everybody's questioning Jesus in Matthew chapter 11. People are saying, wait, are you the one? Or should we look to another? Now, now, before we get upset at John the Baptist, before we gasp and say, oh, how can John the Baptist and his disciples, before we send John the Baptist a text, SMH, and you know, hand to the face emoji, and like, I can't believe you, John the Baptist. Can we be honest? We do it too, yeah. right? All of a sudden, we're in a situation way too long, and we're like, Jesus, are you the one? Or should I look for another? All of a sudden, we're just like, God, are you the one that really said you were going to fix my marriage, or should I look for another? Jesus, are you really the healer, or should I go somewhere else? Jesus, are you really the one that was going to bring me peace in my life, or should I look to another? And all of a sudden, there's fear and anxiety and stress and worry on our shoulders and on our life. And before you know it, we're not making forward progress, but we stop because we're carrying something we shouldn't be carrying. We're not trusting Jesus. And what Jesus wants to do is that he wants us to move forward in 2018. I'm trying to wrap this up quick. I wish we had a little bit more time, but I want to give you three things that I see from the text. How can we move forward in 2018? How can we be in motion in 2018? The first thing that I think we all need in 2018. It's going to sound elementary. It's going to sound basic. But can I tell you, sometimes we need to go back to the basics. The first thing we need in 2018 is that we need to believe in Jesus. We need to believe in Jesus. Somebody say believe. believe. Let your faith in Jesus be greater than your faith in your problems. Let your faith in Jesus. You know why? Because a lot of times we say, I believe in Jesus. Oh, I believe him. I love Jesus. I believe him. Then sings my soul. Oh, we sing all the songs and we sound amazing. Nate's hearing us like, oh, my God, you should join the worship team. Right? We do all these things. But, but when push comes to shove, we're like, Jesus, I, I don't know if he's the one if I should look for another. We say we believe, but do we really have trust in Jesus? Saying something and actually doing it, there's a difference. It's a huge difference than to say, hey, I love Jesus. Come to church on Sunday. Got my little motion journal. I'm excited about Jesus. And all week long, we forget about Jesus. All right? Do we, do we really believe in Jesus? When Jesus says, come to me, all you who are tired, all you who are weary, you know what he's saying? He's saying, believe in me. The real translation is, oh, believe in me. Have faith in me. How many of us truly believe? The other day, uh, we were all hanging out, and we decided to get in the car. 
and we got into a friend's car, and, and this friend, he, he doesn't have a good rep of being a good driver. Like, I'm just going to be honest with you. He doesn't have a rep. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to put him out there. I'm not going to put him on blast, but same guy that helped me move my couch. But he, he was, <laughs> we all get in the car. <laughs> we all, <laughs> we, <laughs> I like the way he drives. Honestly, I do. I, people complain about my driving, too, and I'm like, whatever. You guys don't know how to drive. So everybody gets in the car, and I just notice everybody already starts to complain about his driving, and everybody's saying so I look to my wife. We're in the back seat. Now, I know you should do this all the time, but whatever. She, she's in the back seat. My wife decides to put the seatbelt on, right? And she's like, oh, my God. And we haven't even left the parking lot, and they're already complaining about car sickness, like motion sickness. I'm like, we're not, we're not even moving. Like, what is this? Like, oh, my God. They're putting their seatbelts on. Everybody's complaining. All of a sudden. And they're holding on to the door handle. They're holding on to the car handle. They're holding on to everything. Right? People are closing their eyes and praying. I heard somebody praying in tongues. It got bad. Like, I'm just like, it's not that serious. Like, his driving is great. <laughs> right? And it's like, oh, we're in the car, but we don't trust his driving too much. Can we be honest? A lot of us, this is how we trust Jesus. Jesus, I believe you. Jesus, I give you my life. But I, I'm going to hold on to a lot of my own stuff in case Jesus doesn't come through. Some of us, we trust things more than we do Jesus. I'm going to trust my job more than I do my provider. Oh, I need this job, but I can't. Oh, God, no, if they let me go of this job, if I lose this job, oh, my God. But wait a minute. We got the provider of the universe who said he's got us, that he will provide all of our needs. My faith is not in a boss. My faith is not in an office. My faith is in Jesus. Some of us, we, we hold on more to our relationships than we do our sustainer. Oh, if I lose my girlfriend. Oh, if I lose my boy. Right, so when we used to do youth, some youth come in here crying at 18 years old, and I know you're young, puppy love. What, <laughs> what happened? My boyfriend broke up with me. <laughs> my life is There's a God who loves you. There's a God who made you. You're special. You're beautiful. I know it's tough. I know it's hard. But don't carry that. Give it to your sustainer. Some of us, we're going through a difficult moment in our marriage. Can we trust the God that said he'll be with us? Right? And then we put on our seatbelts and we say, God, you're in control of my life, but I don't know if you know how to drive my life. <laughs> right? And, and we question God and we question what he's doing. We say, God, can you really move my life forward? God, do you really love me the way that you say you do? Right? A lot of us, we have more faith in our problems than we do in the promise. Right? We ah, oh, God, I'm going through this issue right now. And instead of calling on God, we just look at our problems. And all we do is speak to our problems more than we speak to God. Do we believe in Jesus? 2018, let's be believers that, that don't just talk about Jesus. Don't just sing some songs on a Sunday. It's not a routine. It's a relationship with Jesus. I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to believe in him. I'm going to have faith in him. Come on, let's have faith in Jesus. That's why Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, he says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you cares for you. Are you anxious? Are you stressed? I've been there. I've been there more often than not. I found this quote on anxiety, and I, I think it's so true. Look what this author said. I couldn't find out who said it, but he says, anxiety comes when we look at our circumstances and then look at our ability. He says, but faith comes when we look at our circumstances and then look at God's ability. Anxiety, are you stressed out? Are you worried? Maybe it's because we're looking at our problems and saying, I, I can't handle this. How am I going to figure this out? How am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to fix my marriage? How am I going to get my family together? How am I going to bring my kids back home? How am I going to do Are we having more faith in ourselves or do we have faith in Jesus? Jesus says, are you tired? Are you worn out? Come to me and I'll give you rest for your soul. Anybody want rest in 2018? Rest to walk forward. Rest to believe everything that God has for you. We need to believe in Jesus. The second thing that I think we need in 2018 is that we need to walk with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Some of us are writing that down and some of us are hearing that. We're like, well, walk with Jesus. What, 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 what do you mean? Well, the truth is that live your life with Jesus, not just around Jesus. There's a difference between knowing about Jesus and truly knowing Jesus. Right? You can say you know Jesus, but do you really know him? A lot of us, we know a lot of Bible verses. A lot of us, we know all the songs. We grew up in church, right? Like, we know the old school songs. Alabare, alabare, alabare. Come on, some of you know what I'm talking about. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on. 
Say I won't. I'll sing it all day long. I grew up on that stuff. All right? But when's the last time we walked with Jesus? When's the last time we really got away with God and said, God, I, me and you just need to talk for a little bit? Like, like God, it, what, what Jesus says here in Matthew chapter 11, it is an invitation. Come to me. Have faith in me. Believe in me. And then he says, walk with me. Take my yoke and learn from me. Jesus, the Son of God, is giving us an invitation. Like, this is amazing. Like, I know sometimes some of us, we may look at Jesus and we're like, oh, he was a good teacher. He was a good rabbi. He was a good counselor. He was a great talker. I don't know who talks like that, but people say that about Jesus. <laughs> but he was the Son of of the living God. He was God himself in the flesh. God came down to earth, looked at humanity and said, I desire a relationship with you. Walk with me. Learn from me. Come get away with me and I'll show you the rhythms of life. It's a walk with Jesus. Jesus, he... Jesus saw everything that was going around, and he said, okay, there's a bunch of people with anxiety, stress. John the Baptist, if I'm going to go save them. A bunch of stuff is going on. All of a sudden, he looked around. There was religious leaders and Pharisees at this time that what they were doing is that they were putting extra weight on the people. What was happening here is that they were putting additional rules, laws, regulations on rituals on people that God never meant. Right? So when he says, take my yoke upon you, some of us will look at that the first time I read it. I'm like, my yoke upon you? They, you they, 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 they spelled it wrong. It's joke with a J. What is a yoke? I don't know. Then I learned a yoke. A yoke is a wooden beam that they would put on a pair of ox. Right? It's a heavy wooden beam that they would put on two ox. They would put it on their necks because they wanted the oxen to work the field. Right? So they put this heavy beam called a yoke. And it was a heavy thing on their neck. And wherever you led them, that's where they would go. They would yoke him together, right? So what were the Pharisees and the religious people doing is that they said, hey, you want to know God? You need rules. You need regulations. You need rituals. You need all these laws to know God. It was a religious concept, not a relationship concept, right? And so they're like, okay, you, you know, God gave us Ten Commandments. Then there's the Mosaic Law. On top of that, they added a bunch of laws. You know how many laws there were? 613 laws at this time. 613 laws. How you should do your beard, uh, who you should marry, what kind of clothes you should wear, what kind of food you should eat, what kind of food you shouldn't eat. Uh, I mean, all kind, how you should brush your grill, all kind of different things. Like, there was laws on everything, right? They made all kinds of laws. And imagine waking up trying to fulfill 613 laws. Some of us had difficult with two rules at home. Like, all my wife wants is for me to love her and take out the garbage, you know, and I have a hard time doing that. Imagine 613 laws every day. Wake up. I'm going to look at 613 laws. How am I supposed to live? God never meant that. God doesn't want rules, regulations, and rituals. He wants relationship, intimacy, to walk with him, to know him. Maybe today, maybe today you're in here and you're like, Alex, this is how I've been living. I've been living with rules, rituals, and regulations, Right? Some of us, we started the year, and we already messed up. We did some things that we shouldn't have done. We're confused with our own sin. Why do I keep messing up? Why do I got this bad habit? Why do I got this addiction? You know what we do? We put an extra yoke on our neck. I'm a bad Christian. Oh, what I need to do is I just need to go to church. Maybe I'll stay for all four services today because that's what God wants. You know what God wants? God wants your heart. God doesn't want church attendance. I'm glad that you're here. I pray you keep coming. I know we got no more seats. I know additional seating is full. And this is amazing. The Bible says don't quit congregating together. But that's not God's desire. God's desire is to have an intimate relationship with each of us. Being around Jesus is way different than to be alone with Jesus. Some of us, we like just like being. Some of us, you know what we are? We're great watchers, not walkers. Right? I've been a great watcher for a long time. Right, we, we watch Jesus, we come to church, we watch the lyrics. Oh my God, I love this. This one's my favorite. It comes out Friday, right? <laughs> we see what God does and church is great. All these people getting baptized. Oh my God, it's amazing. We're around Jesus a whole lot and we watch Jesus, but when's the last time we walked with Jesus? Right, when's the last time we, we went home and it's happened in my life, right? Where it's just like, man, when's the last time I got alone with God? What God wants is an intimate relationship with each of us. Some of us, you know, we're addicted to atmospheres and environments instead of relationship with God. 
Oh, we need more service. Let's put a service on Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. We need a, we need a service every single night. What you want is an environment and an atmosphere, but God doesn't live there. God lives in the heart of every human being who puts their faith in him and says, I'm going to walk together with you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to do this life with you. God desires a relationship, intimacy. I heard this preacher one time said, intimacy stands for into me, see God, see me, see my heart. Let me get away with you. The Bible says to get away with God. Jesus says, when you pray, go into a room and close the door behind you. You alone with God. One on one. Not a church service. Not some songs. Not a whole bunch of people. You and Jesus. You want to move forward? You want progress? We need intimacy with Jesus. I need to walk with him. I need to know him. I don't want to know about him. I want to know him. I don't want somebody else to give me a whole bunch of statistics. I don't want to bust somebody else to give me a whole bunch of stories about Jesus because he invited me to know him. So I want to know him for myself. I want to know him personally. He made me. He created me. He's invited me. Why am I going to take somebody else's word? I want to know my God. I'm going to get along with my God. 2018, you want forward progress in your life? Stop putting more yokes on you. Stop putting more rules, regulations. Jesus says, come to me. I love it that he didn't invite us to a program. He invited us to a person, and the person is Jesus. 2018. 2018, I, I just want more of Jesus. I want to know him. Paul says that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. We may get away with God and I know this isn't popular teaching, and I know you'll probably turn on the TV and maybe not hear this, but I don't care. Let's be honest. We need to go back to the basics, where it's not Sunday to Sunday living. You know what we need more in 2018? We need more intentional living, where we're not on autopilot. Like, I'm just going to show up, get to church, have a nice song, then go home, and then Monday through Friday, forget about it, never open up our Bibles, and Saturday night, where's my Bible? i got to get it again because Sunday comes. It's like life just becomes routine. I love that the new song motion says, oh, to see you, to know you, you are my choice. I choose you. It's intentional. I want to know this God. I want to walk with this God. If there's promises that he made about me, then I want to know you, God. I want to know your promises. 2018, I decided in my own life, I'm, I'm going to let go of some burdens. I'm going to let go of some stress. I'm going to let go of some anxiety. I'm going to let go of some worries. There's some stuff I can't control. There's some stuff I will never be able to know. There's some stuff that is out of my hands, out of my reach. But there's a God that's way bigger than me, and his ways are higher than my ways. And I'm going to trust him. I want to know him. I want to believe in him, and I want to walk with him. God wants to walk with all of us daily. Maybe, maybe today... We need to do is say, man, this week, I'm, I'm going to wake up five, ten minutes earlier. I'm going to go into a room. I'm going to close the door behind me. I'm just going to spend time alone with God. I want him to speak to me. I want him to see into me. I want, I want to know him. Anybody want to know Jesus in 2018? Number one, that we would believe in him. Number two, that we would walk with him. Number three, and finally, and the band can come up. The last thing that we need in 2018, I really believe, is that we need to surrender to Jesus. Surrender to Jesus. Maybe some of us in here today, you came in here carrying so much stuff. You came in here carrying so much burden. And maybe today you came in here carrying worry, stress, anxiety, families, spouses, stuff that we can't control. And God, what am I going to do? And where am I going to go? And my prayer and our prayer would be that you would hear the voice of Jesus say, hey, hey, I've got it from here. I've got it. Lay it down. Some of us, we need to lay down our burdens so that we can pick up his grace. Jesus says, walk with me. Get away with me. I'm going to show you the unforced ryth rhythms of grace. Alex, but I've messed up too much. This addiction has ruined my life. This sin, this habit, I can't get over it. Jesus says, learn about my grace. My grace is sufficient for you. You're punishing yourself. You're hard on yourself. You say, I'm not even going to church because God doesn't want me. You don't know grace then. Get to know grace today. His name is Jesus. And he came and he grabbed all of our sin. He grabbed all of our weight, all of our burden, everything that was, that was on our shoulders, that was wearing us down. Jesus says, give it to me. I've got it from here. I've got it from here. 
You don't have to live 2018 with all that on your shoulders. Every single time you feel like your shoulders are getting heavy, I can give it to Jesus. I can give it to him. You know what I learned this past week? It's really hard to see with a sofa on your shoulders. <laughs> it's really hard to move forward with a big couch on you. Some of us, we got couches of anxiety on us right now. Some of us, we got sofas of control and stress. Some of us got a big couch of sin in our life and we're saying, how? I can't do this. I can't move forward with God. He wants nothing in my life. You know what I think some of us need to begin to do in 2018? Give up. We need to give up in 2018. We need to give up control. We need to give up our pride. We need to give up our ego. We need to give up the need of having to carry everything. And we just got to say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay it down. I'm going to give it up and I'm going to lay it down. Because the Bible says that he cares for me. Because the Bible says that he loves me. Because the Bible says that I can trust him. Because the Bible says that I can walk with Jesus and, and his burden is light and his yoke is easy and I can walk with him. I can learn from him. I can live in daily relationship. I need to surrender in 2018. I love what the psalmist says. Last verse we'll read and then we'll worship Jesus. Psalm chapter 55 verse 2. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. Anybody, I love that word sustain you. You know what food does? Food sustains us. You know what God does? He sustains us when food can't sustain us. Cast your cares on me. I will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. 2018, the world might shake. The, the, the world may crumble. Your finances may fall. Your marriage may go through a hard time. Your kids may be all over the place. But there's a God who will never let us be shaken. Come on, he's a true God. He's Jesus, the Son of God. He says, walk with me. Believe me. Get to know me. Surrender to me. Today, I just want to believe Jesus. Today, I just want to surrender to him. This morning, I just want to say, Jesus, have it all. Have my life, Jesus. Come on, with all of us, we can get up on our feet across the auditorium in an additional seating. All across this place. We're about to throw a big old party outside. I went a little bit over time, but before anybody leaves, I want every eye closed and every head bowed really quick. Two more minutes and we'll be out of here. Every eye closed and every head bowed. If you're in here today and you say, Alex, I don't know this God. I'm far from God. I got sin in my life. I got some things in my life that nobody knows about. I'm carrying around shame and guilt. I've done wrong. I've messed up. I've, I've done wrong to people. I've done wrong to my family. I, I've, I've headed down the wrong path. There's good news for you. Jesus, he loves you. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life. Whether you're in the auditorium or whether you're in additional seating, God has a plan for your life. With every eye closed and every head bowed while the church is praying. If you're in here today and you think that God wants nothing to do with you, I want to tell you God wants everything to do with you. The Bible says that all of us are sinners. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We've all sinned. We've all failed God. The Bible says that sin separates us from God. But God loved us so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus. Jesus says, I've got it from here. Give me your sin. Give me your shame. Give me your guilt. Give it all to me. The Bible says that Jesus, he carried the weight of the world on his shoulders he took all of our sins put it on his shoulders he went up to a cross and the Bible says that he died the death that you and I should have died he paid the penalty for sin he died on that cross he went down to a grave and the Bible says that he was dead for three days but after three days Jesus he resurrected he's alive today He's offering forgiveness. He's offering hope. He is the answer. He wants to give you peace. Today, it doesn't matter what you did yesterday, last week, last year. Today is a day of brand new beginnings. The Bible says his mercies are made new each and every single day. With every eye closed and every head bowed, come on, while the church is praying. I'm going to count to three in just a moment. And I believe hands are going to go up across the auditorium, across the additional seating, on the radio or online. 9 a.m., so many hands went up. If you're in here, you say, Alex, I need forgiveness. Alex, today I need a brand new beginning. At the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I just want to see you for a second, and then you can put it right back down. With every eye closed, every head bowed for privacy and concentration. If that's you, at the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, 
three. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on, as high as you can. As high as you can. Hold it up for just a second. I want to see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. Are you? I see you. I see you. I see you. God bless 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 you back there. In additional seating all the way in the back. I see you. God bless you. Amazing. Amazing. God bless you all the way in the back. God bless you. Amazing. Hands raised up everywhere. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for each and every single life that made a decision today to follow you. Jesus, seal this moment with your Holy Spirit. All of you that raise your hand, I'm going to say a simple prayer, and I want you to repeat this prayer with me from the bottom of your heart. It's not my prayer that saves anybody. It's our faith in Jesus that saves us. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. The whole church, let's say it together as a family. Come on, let's back them up. We're going to say it together as a community of faith. Repeat after me. Say, Father, Father thank, you thank you for today. For today. Thank, you thank you for this opportunity. For this opportunity. Today, today, I admit that I'm a sinner and that my sin separates me from you. Come on, say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God, that you died for my sins, and on the third day, you resurrected. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. From today on, I am forgiven, I am saved, and I'm healed. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, and amen. Let's give them a big hand. Come on, church. Well, we hope that today's message has encouraged you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at calvaryconnect.com for more info. Until next time.